All right, guys, Good Boy 32 here, check it out. So we're sitting here in the Freedom Office. Uh, Merry Christmas. Uh, I'm going to do a video here real quickly. And this is going to address uh, what I think it ties a lot of the stuff that we were talking earlier about with ATF and the 80% lowers. Well, it appears that uh, there are a lot of states, attorney generals, who are supporting or are or behind a couple lawsuits filed by California as well as New York against uh, the ATF, believe it or not, uh, trying to get these guys to regulate the 80% lowers. And, and if you're not familiar with an 80% lower, you're new to the channel. An 80% lower is basically a block of uh, polymer or aluminum that has been produced to an 80% level. It's not yet a firearm. The ATF claims it's not a firearm. The caveat to this whole thing, the danger of it is that if we start regulating any piece of plastic out there and calling it a firearm, this is the danger that these assholes don't understand. That, uh, you know what? You can start saying this guy right here is a firearm, okay? Uh, this laser is attached to a firearm. Well, that well, that's a part of a firearm, so we can start putting a serial number on that and regulating that. Uh, a bipod can be... <laughs> termed a, a, a firearm. I mean, at what point do we stop this thing? A guy with a uh, rubber band gun, is that a firearm? Well, anyway, so what I did was, uh, I'm going to put the link down below to this article, uh, but it's attorneys general in D.C., Maryland, and Virginia support lawsuit demanding ATF regulate what's so-called ghost guns, and this is by the Washington Post. And I'm going to give uh, credit to Tom Jackman. He is the author of this article, and it was uh, put out yesterday. So these are a couple things that I highlight. And what I will do, I'm going to start analyzing these things because you can really tell where these people stand. And again, the danger is once you start regulating what the ATF has deemed a, an 80%, well, at what point do we stop saying things are a firearm? Well, everything can be ruled a firearm. All right, so federal government has ruled that the large gun parts can be sold without regulation because they are not a finished firearm. And these are excerpts from this article. Uh, this was uh, released yesterday, uh, the Washington Post, by Mr. Tom Jackman. The Attorney General of D.C., Maryland, and Virginia are supporting a federal lawsuit seeking to have the Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, and Firearms, and Explosives regulate the widely sold parts of homemade ghost guns as firearms in an attempt to stop the steadily increasing use of the untraceable firearms in crimes across the country. Yeah, so you can see maybe where they were trying to get some heat off their back by actually going after Polymer 80 for selling these kits. The parts for a ghost gun can be ordered easily on the internet and instructional videos show how an 80% lower part of a gun can be milled and drilled into a fully functioning 100% lower. That piece then can be combined with unregulated upper parts. Now you get this thing, the trigger, the barrel, the firing pin to make a gun that has no serial numbers and requires no background check. So again, now what I feel is like they're gonna be the next thing. They want to regulate all the parts that could be purchased online to where I guess like in California, some other areas that you have to have an actual background check in order to obtain these parts and pieces. I mean, uh, you can look behind me. There's there's parts and pieces all over there. I've got, man, I've got shit stacked up from left to right. Uh, but what we're getting at is that once they start this, this is a rabbit hole. This is a big thing. The ATF has got to stick to their guns. And I know I trashed the ATF the other day, but you guys got to stick to your guns on this because every time they these guys, the media, uh, the bureaucrats open their damn mouths, uh, they're trying to villainize anything that can that can be associated with the firearm i mean even youtube they don't want to uh they don't want to monetize videos when you do a review on a red dot because they feel like that's part of the firearm we're trying to sell or express our opinions on how awesome firearms are all right so another little part that i've highlighted here the local attorney generals joined 16 other states attorneys generals in a brief supporting a federal suit filed in the Southern District of New York by cities of Syracuse, New York, San Jose, Chicago, Columbia, South Carolina. What? And pro-gun control group, Every Town for Gun Safety, no kidding, against the ATF and the Justice Department and the U.S. Attorney General. And this is neat because before all this stuff happened, I didn't know any of that existed. 
So it's, it's, it gives a little bit more insight on why the ATF may or may not have wanted to do what they were doing. The suit targets several interpretive rulings issued by the ATF to gun parts manufacturers in recent years stating that the unfinished lower and upper parts of guns are not themselves firearms. And they're not. And this, again, this leads the whole deal. Is it to the rabbit hole? Where does it end? I mean, what, what, at what point do you, is that gun grip? Is a grip that you ordered is a, uh, I don't know, barrel nut? I got a new barrel nut for that 6.5 Creedmoor. Is that a firearm? Should it be serialized? Should I have to go through a background check to buy that? You see where this is leading to? All right, let's just continue on going. The ATS website says, that items such as receiver blanks, castings, or machine bodies in which the fire control cavity area is completely solid and unmachined have not reached the stage of manufacturer, which would result in the classification of a firearm under federal law. Now, there's a lot of other areas they ban this kind of thing, and that's fine. You can do whatever you want. But it's not right. The manufacturers then posted ATF rulings on the websites to reassure customers. All right, this is conjecture. This is the part where the media is trying to put in their little two cents to kind of villainize this whole thing. Uh, the manufacturers then posted the ATF rulings on their websites to reassure customers that the parts they are buying are legal. Such rulings encouraged and emboldened the ghost gun industry to sell its products nationwide, even in the states that have banned them. And the filing said, since 2015, D.C. and six states have enacted ghost gun specific statutes, the Attorney General said in their amicabus, amicus brief. Uh, okay, so basically it goes on. But again, what I'm trying to say is that you've got the media out there. Gonna, they're going to make this stuff look as bad as they can. They're trying to paint a picture that uh, these gun parts should be regulated as firearms. And again, that's where the ATF has got to use the wisdom and go, no, you, you, there has to be a line drawn. It has to be a functioning firearm. And that's where we're going to go with our next spot. The ATF said last year that about 30% of guns recovered in California had no serial numbers. Well, was that from ghost guns or was that from firearms that had their serial numbers ground off? Remember the good old days? Uh, <laughs> the ATS, all right, so this is from Mark Herring, the Attorney General in uh, Virginia. He has been on several of my videos and a very many of the subject. Uh, yeah, the ATF's reckless interpretation of the law and the lack of regulation could lead to more untraceable guns on our streets, potentially putting Virginians and their families at risk. Virginia Attorney General Mark Herring said in a news release. Mark Herring, you don't have to paint a picture. State what your facts are, and there are no facts that lead to that. The ATF has not yet responded to the suit in New York, but in similar suit filed by the state of California, two fathers of a ghost gun shooting victims and the Giffords Law Center to prevent gun violence, of course, the agency defended its interpretation of the Federal Gun Control Act of 1968. The Bureau argued that a receiver blank may not readily be converted into a firearm because it requires numerous millings and metal working steps and a working gun cannot be produced without difficulty. The gun... <sighs> <laughs> this is the funny part. The Gun Control Act defines firearms uh, firearm as any weapon that is designed to or may readily be converted to expel a projectile by the action of an explosive. Kathleen Konopka, the D.C. Attorney General for the Public Advocacy, said in an interview that many states pattern their laws after a failure. To our surprise, and here again, let's paint a picture, the ATF has now interpreted this otherwise. We feel that's a misinterpretation of federal and state statutes. Again, at what point are you going to say BS? Are we going to, like, the, the bipod can be attached to a firearm. Is this going to, eventually, this is going to be a firearm that we have to have serialized? Making a gun at home is legal and has been done by firearms enthusiasts. Uh, they talk about the advent of the 3D printers and uh, the polymer stuff or the plastic is not really strong enough. Uh, but only licensed firearm dealers may sell guns. So making a gun with no serial number or buying one from someone who did is attractive to criminals. There is no background check, yada, yada, yada. Uh, so what they do is the fact, <laughs> and this is from Konopka, Konopka, the fact that they're not regulated, Konopka says, has really added to the crime in the city and decreased the ability to solve those crimes. Exactly how 
can you judge that and apply it to a matrix to show me exactly how those guns have increased in crimes in your city when your city's of trash anyways as far as crime's concerned. The ATF's interpretation of the law, Maryland Attorney General Brian E. Frosch said in a release, allows criminals who cannot pass a background check to obtain untraceable firearms. It is a flat-out danger to law-abiding citizens. No, I will tell you what is a flat-out danger to law-abiding citizens, ladies and gentlemen, are these attorneys general. These guys, I don't care what you have. If you have a firearm, their idea is that you are a potential criminal. And all they want to do is they want to get the guns out of your hands. They want to make it more difficult for you to purchase a firearm like Virginia did with one firearm purchase a month. Can you just sit there and say, oh, well, you know, gosh, Virginia's not, they don't allow us to buy but one gun a month, so I can't be a straw purchaser down there. When all it does is say, you know, <laughs> I can't buy more than one gun for Christmas, which, by the way, I did get a pistol. It was one of the uh, Gerson uh, models of the uh, Beretta uh, A3, I think it is, or the M3, whatever. It's got the pick rail on the bottom of it. And I will tell you this, a fine firearm. It is really, really nice. So anyway, that's it, guys. Uh, I know it was a little bit longer than we normally like to go, uh, but let me know what your thoughts are down below. I thought this was a really interesting article in the mere fact that you can tell by the tone in the article what they try to do is they villainize, make it uh, evil to own one of these things. Uh, everybody's got them, and they're all going to go out and commit crimes with them. And if we don't get them off the street or regulate them, but again, where do we draw the line? What is a firearm? Let me know what your thoughts are down below. Guys, if you like the video, please give it a thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't already done so. Support the red, white, and blue. God bless America. God bless those men, women, in uniform who support a constitution that was written by our founding fathers. 24-7 for our freedom, because freedom is not free. I'm KB32, and I am out of here. Y'all be good. Hey, this weekend I'm going to be putting together that 6.5 Creedmoor and uh, might be able to get out to the range if they get rid of some of the snow. With that being said, y'all be good. Merry Christmas. Have a great day. Bam.